Maybe we could we do are, that. We're live. We're live. <laughs> hey, we are live. I love the way Bill says it. Say it one more time, Bill. We are live. It's like the old Saturday Night Live. Hey, it's live yeah, from New York. We're Saturday Night. Of, I don't know. It, it reminds me of Young Frankenstein. It's alive. <laughs> it's alive. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Police Off the Cuff After Hours. Oh, uh, I got my volume on my... Uh, we are live. Uh, welcome, and uh, this is. Uh, we have a great guest tonight. My name is Mark DeMeo. I'm your host, and I, uh, my, my partner, my uh, co-host, everything in law enforcement. Bill Cannon, what's up, buddy? Doing great, man. I'm, you know, I get the great Eric Schubert tonight, who I met like three months ago. He was playing hard to get, but now he's I on know. our show. That's what happens yeah. when I'm a student. I mean, it's a little crazy. That's right. No, no, I respect the fact that he took the time out to uh, to join us tonight, and that he held off while he was in the middle of his studies. That shows you that he's a responsible young man. Our guest tonight is a 19-year-old genealogist. Uh, he started off as a as a young kid um, going on the computer. Is is uh, with uh, his mother wanted to help him. Uh, you know, he was bored a little bit, so uh, she put him on the computer and he started working on genealogy, and now he's a professional at it. He makes a lot of money on it, I think. Um, so let's welcome Eric Schubert, folks. Thank you so, so much. Happy to be here. What's up, buddy? On, and you know, I would I would never blow you off. I promise I would come <laughs> on, and here I am. That's so great. You know, Eric, when I read about you, First of all, I was amazed because I, I really don't know that much about genealogy. And I know that you must be like a computer whiz because to find all these documents is no small task. Yeah, I, I usually have about, you know, 10,000 tabs open on my laptop. So that's fun. Um, a lot of people call me the mad scientist. So that gives you a good idea. <laughs> hey, can you, good. Let's just start from the top. Tell, tell our audience, what is genealogy? So genealogy is, I think there's a lot of definitions you could go for, but genealogy, I think a good way to put it is the uh, tracing the lineage of families. I think there's a billion definitions that people could do for it, um, but tracing the lineage of families across generations uh, through the records, you know, to build a family tree. Okay. And like I mentioned, there, there was a period in time where, uh, you were bored. What, what was going on in your life that you were bored and, and that your mother introduced you to uh, genealogy? Yeah, I'm always bored. That's why I'm crazy because now I'm nonstop. Um, <laughs> I used to, I used to be homesick all the time when I was a, when I was a kid, like elementary school, like you know nine, ten years old. I used to get pneumonia, um, so I would you know just sit home, annoy my mother, you know, try and get her to buy me ice cream. You know, typical nine year old shenanigans. Um, and at that point too, I actually, I was born with three living grandparents, uh, and they all died within a year around that time frame. So, you know, obviously that's upsetting. Um, but you know, those two things together, I was, you know, sick at home, wanted something to do. My mom saw, I think like an, you know, a genealogy commercial, one of the big sites or something. Uh, and she said, you know, what if you do that and use up some of your time, you know, I'm sure she just wanted me to stop annoying her. Uh, mom, if you're listening, good choice. Um, so I just kind of started doing that. I thought it would be a quick thing. I'm sure my parents thought it would be a quick thing. Uh, but that was 10 years ago. So you know, I, it's uh, certainly come a long way. That's a crazy story about the fact that you were home uh, suffering from pneumonia, ill. It, it seems to be like the starting story for every genius <laughs> Every comic book genius, a uh, bad guy. You know, they're sick. They can't play baseball with their friends. Uh, true, true. You know, every genius uh, uses their time wisely. They're not wasting it outside playing stupid sports and never going to play professionally. <laughs> if, you know? if only that genius translated into like high school chemistry. Uh huh. If only, if only. Eric, let me ask you something. You got to be a, an outstanding student, I would imagine, right? Are you a 4.0? Are you a 4.0? I'm, but I'm don't. I'm not sure if I'm there yet, but I'm definitely an AB student. I'll gi I'll give myself that credit. Hey, yes. I was a AB student. Come on, you got to impress me. You know, you're a genealogist. I wasn't any of that. My my parents are. You know, they they make sure I'm not slacking off. So I got to meet their standards. Do you um? 
when you sat down for the first time and your mother introduced you, was that something she was into? Was she into genealogy? I think she was interested, but she's, I'm sure she definitely didn't do as much work, obviously, as I ended up doing or thought that, you know, I would do that much work. I mean, out of all, you know, the family, she's, she, I, as long as I remember, she's been the one that's kind of been relatively interested. But from what I remember, it was just a very basic. Yeah, like, you know what? These I'm are my grandparents, you. and that's all I know. I'm going to tell you something, Eric. Knowing women the way I know them, your mother was really into genealogy. And she figured out, you know what? Why not put this kid on there? Oh, 100%. 100%. But, uh, let him start looking up the family tree. And it, it was, <laughs> you did all her work, basically. She, she wanted me to stop asking her for ice cream. So, I mean, it, I think it paid off. It was, it was definitely a good move on her part. Uh huh. So, you sit down there. What's the first step? Because I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Bill is a, he was a homicide sergeant. I was a detective. Um, both of us with the NYPD. And, you know, I was, I spent a lot of time in the Warren squad and, and uh, a lot of figuring out where these people were. Cause you only really, we used to have a, call it like you're the deer hunter. You have one shot, one kill. Yeah. Like if you don't get this person on the first try, um, you're probably not going to get them. So it was very important that I would sit down at the computer and I knew how to do my checks. We were talking about this last show. We had all the bads uh, looking up background information, where they lay their head, if they own a boat, this, that, and the other, uh, where, where, they're, where they're cashing their food stamps, uh, you know, using their uh, EBD cards and stuff like that. Where was your first, what's the first step when you're starting the basic thing for genealogy? For... Genealogy, it's a little different in terms of finding people like, you know, in 1940, as opposed to finding people now. And I, I do the same thing for if I have to find someone now, I'm, you know, tracking down all their addresses, family addresses, that sort of thing. But a good start in like typical genealogy stuff, like, you know, if you want to find out where your parents were or something like that, a good starting place is always the um, 1940 census and 1950 is actually going to be released next year. And basically, if you've heard of it, it's just a, you know, obviously I'm sure you know what the census is, but the 1940 census is the most publicly released one. Um, and it has, you know, neighborhood by neighborhood, block by block, um, who's living where, ages, that sort of thing. So like my uh, grandfather was born in 1937. So I have him in the 1940 census with his parents. And then all the other censuses are to 1790s. So you, you can just keep going back. Um, so I think censuses are always a good starting point if your family or you know the who you're looking for was in America at least in 1940 or born by then because they're really cool and they have a lot of cool info. So for the for the what you're saying is the fact that I did not fill out my census for no other reason except the fact that I don't know I just didn't feel like doing it. I kept putting it off on the side. Nobody's going to uh, – I'm messing up the whole genealogy trail. For, oh, 100%. 100%. <laughs> 100 Mark, I just want to shout out. From now, someone's <laughs> going to be looking. I want to shout out to some of our live chatters. Aaron Rodriguez, thank you so much for the $20 live uh, super chat. Uh, Peter Pranzo, the great Lieutenant Peter Pranzo, 12-step woman, MC's audio, Chazzy Chaz. My God. Cindy Newman, Miss Angela Lapp. Um, Egg, Eric, uh, Edward Kelly, too. Don't forget Edward him. Kelly, Cheryl Lynn, Charlie, 12 Step Woman, Melody McAtee, and of course, Rachella Pranzo is here. J Joe Reek, retired inspector. Vincent Falsita, thank you, buddy, for sticking up for me on that site the other day. <laughs> okay. Diane B. Uh, who else we got here? Joyce. Joyce. Uh, I'm going through all these. Edward Kelly again. Uh, Richard Ficken. I was in street crime with him in 1988. Long time ago. Joyce, hello. Princess Mitch. Uh, that's enough of shouting out to the chatters. Eric, you know what else I wanted to ask you? Wait, yeah. let, me, let me finish the last thing. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Do you remember? Oh, a hundred years from now, when someone's going to be looking for you, they're going to be want to tear their hair out like I do sometimes when you're not showing up on the thing. But I'm sure they'll track you down somehow. It always works out. All right. Go now, ahead. Eric, some of the databases uh, that you use, are you using any like paid databases, like private eye databases that you have to pay for? I never do any like paid, like people search type of stuff. 
But there's a lot of free genealogical documents out there. And like, if you know what you're looking for, and if you Google hard enough, you can usually you can find it. Um, a lot of like genealogy type subscription stuff, like newspaper archives, um, I'll pay for that sort of thing. Um, but I, I, I never pay for like current people search stuff. Um, since I'm, I, I like to think that I'm, I'm good at it without it. You're I mean, better than those people search exactly, places, right? Exactly. I hype <laughs> myself up a little bit. Um, but how, about I, a, I, how about a phone number, a cell phone number? Can you do anything with that? You, I mean, sometimes, um, so obviously cell phones are tricky, but I, obviously I know you two probably know that. Um, it really depends, but I know I'll have, I'm like the guy who, if my friends get like, a random phone call or something, they send it to me and they say, can you, you know, who is this and why are they calling me? Um, so I guess I'm just that person. How, what's the furthest back that you've gone? I always like to say with that, I mean, on certain lines and, you know, in certain places, you can really go back really, really far. I mean, you know, you see it on TV, people tracing back to, you know, kings and queens and whatever. And my opinion on that always is, I mean, you can do it sometimes, but how accurate, you know, is it really? Um, sometimes, you know, it can be, that stuff can be confirmed with DNA and everything. But I mean, you you can trace out far in some instances, like, you know, back to kings and queens. But I always kind of like to cap things sometimes at like 16, 1700s, if you can get back that far. Like, because, you know, that's, that's not a thing for everyone. You know, if your family's been here forever, you can sometimes. But I mean, I always say, too, and this just comes with my line of work. Like, you can trace it out that far and you can think it's really accurate. But I mean, are you are you sure that, you know, going back 35 um, generations, you know, there might not be something 100 percent right? Uh, so it, I mean, it really depends. You never know. But I always like to cap things off at a certain point because I, I like to take a more like conservative. How often than, does your um your your uh, your work take you back to the Ellis Island records? And how are those online? And you can look at it. Yeah, just I th I think Ellis Island stuff is free online. Um, I I kind of it's in a bunch of different free databases too, so I kind of look at it from different sources sometimes. But that's there. Um. But a lot of people's families didn't come over via Ellis Island. Um, no one's names were changed at Ellis Island. Fun fact. Because um, Ellis Island only opened in, I think it was 1891. So if someone came to the Port of New York before then, they went to Castle Garden, which I think now is Battery Park. Um, my mother's family, because uh, my mom's from New York, her family, um, or at least one of them, came through Castle Garden and not Ellis Island. Um, but Ellis Island records are there. They're around. They're always good, always helpful. Um, I personally, for my personal use, haven't had to use them. But for other people, I definitely do. The one thing that's interesting about the Ellis Island um, archives is the handwriting. So when you yes. look at it and you're going back and looking at your family history, you could see when your father, your grandfather or your great grandfather came here from whatever country or exactly whatever, and you could actually see them writing their name there and you could see like wow this person was pretty stupid <laughs> he wrote his name in three x's <laughs> yeah well because a lot of people couldn't read a lot of people couldn't write um <laughs> the inspectors were kind of writing on the um on the manifest but i always like to say with like draft cards and stuff that has a signature line so you can see like your you know 18 year old great grandfather um you know, getting drafted. Um, but yeah, like the handwriting and stuff is always neat, whether it's for, you know, whether it's a just old in general or if it's like your ancestors handwriting. Um, it's usually it's fun to read, especially when you're back that far. Um, but it's it's fun. And honestly, it's, it's a good uh, thing to have knowing how to read old handwriting. Eric, um, I want to ask you a question. Someone yeah. comes, someone, someone comes to you. Mm -hmm. They're in their 30s and they yeah. say they were adopted mm -hmm. and uh, or they were given up for adoption at birth. Mm -hmm. How do you go about finding their birth mother? And I saw a case where it didn't end so happily because the birth mother yeah. wanted nothing to do with Yeah, them. yeah. So. Um, well, I always say some states are open, some states are closed in terms of adoption records, like getting original birth certificates. Like uh, New York and New Jersey and PA, I think the, the tri-states, 
did it fairly recently, like in the last three, four years, um, regardless of whether someone has that or not, um, most of the time, and it, maybe it's just my luck with this, but most of the time they're fake anyways. You'd be surprised the loops that, you know, biological parents would go through to hide their identities on the records. So usually I always need a DNA test. I always like ancestry DNA uh, because I, as I always say, the DNA doesn't lie. Um, and often there's some, you know, specs of info if they have an original birth certificate that are true. Um, but usually all I need is DNA results. Um, and as long as they're not, you know, absolutely terrible, which it's rarely that I come across DNA results that are tough to decipher, um, then I can just trace it out and figure it out. I'm a little curious right now. There's a lot going on in that, in that little bit of that you just said. Yeah. Okay, so you brought up ancestry uh, and these these genealogy things, 23andMe, Ancestry.com. Um we we know you know it's it's very very interesting, but the the people are scared of one thing. Like I'm I'm wondering like you know they're getting our our voices when they call up and uh, we say hello on the phone all the time. I'm gonna have to convert you. They know. I'll have to convert you to a supporter. <laughs> they know they, they know exactly what you like and we what you don't like because of their you know all the stuff that you do on uh, social media and then we're posting up pictures of us. We even some of us even do pictures where we're what we would have looked like as women and what we would have looked like as, as little kids. You know what I'm saying? And all this stuff, I, can, I you know, the conspiracy theorist in me says, um, now I'm going to give them my DNA as well, just so they can uh, perfect this uh, this clone of me and put me at a crime scene somewhere. So that's my paranoia with it. Uh, what do you think about that? I always say, think of it like this. You could get one of these tests, spit in the tube, you know, whatever, and, you know, um, confirm it, get it sent off, and you never have to put your name in. You can, people on there that are in there as John Smith and John Doe. So, you know, they're not, no one's going to know it's you. Um, I mean, I could probably figure out it's you if it's in a database and they're shared matches. I could figure out who you are. But I mean, all that stuff's private. All these companies like Ancestry and 23andMe um, are don't work with police or government. They deny warrants and everything like that constantly, uh, which is why um, crimes and genealogy are from different databases. When I work with that, um, I think because I think I saw a comment asking if I have solved crimes. So yes, but I'm sure that I'll yeah. save that. Um, yeah, we, we were going to get to that later on. Yes, yeah, so I'll save that. But. Yeah. I always, I mean, I always just say everything's private. You can be as private as you want with it. You don't have to put your name. No, no one's going to know it to you if you don't want it to be. Um, and, you know, these companies are really good with not letting the government have anything to do with it. Eric, part B of that question, the yes. girl that you found her biological mother and the mother wanted nothing to do with her, did they, did she at all try to blame you for opening that oh, Pandora's CBS, box? Oh, no, no. The, I, the CBS story, is it with my one friend? I, I think, think so, friend? yeah. Yeah. No, no I mean, it's a, it's you know a what, scenario you, there. Who brought it up? Tell us the, the story from the beginning this way. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. So um, I, I have a very good friend uh, who was adopted, and I actually had no idea that she was adopted until a few years ago. Um, so she asked me to help find her parents and she had a general idea. Um, but long story short, I figured out who they were. Um, she has a you know very good relationship with her half siblings and everything. Um, and she also knows that relationships you know, with biological parents and stuff aren't always guaranteed or go well or anything like that. Um, so it, you know, she has a great relationship with her half siblings and her uh, new nephew uh, who was born, I think he's two now. Um, so no, not at all. Um, there's pros and cons with this sort of thing, uh, especially when you're, you know, reaching out to biological family. Well, what happened with this particular girl, with this particular friend of yours? She, uh, found, you, you found her mother. Yeah, yeah. I found both her parents. Um, she just, you know, didn't want to pursue it, which people don't. Uh, but she, you know, like I said, she has relationships with her um, half siblings, which is great uh, because some people choose to do that. So it's, you know, it's a very personal process. When you say she didn't want to pursue it, you, you're talking about the mother didn't want to reconnect? No, a lot of times people don't, you know, I'll give them the information as to who their parents are and they don't want to deal with that. 
Um, but if they have siblings and stuff, you know, sometimes they'll reach out to them and that goes well, uh, like it did with her. Um, but yeah, all, all, it's all cases where people will pay me to figure out who their parents are. I had one where I figured it out and she actually said, just kidding. Don't actually tell me I changed my mind. <laughs> um, so it, like I said, it's a, it's a very personal thing. So you'd be surprised, you know, the, the sort of things that can come up and, you know, how things work sometimes. You know, Eric, you talk about you have a, uh, you've been doing this since you're eight years old and you're 19 right now, right? Yeah. So you're yeah. 10, you're going on 11 years doing this. And you've yeah, established, a time. yeah, you've established a business doing this. Do you yeah. have like, do you have like a menu of things and how much they cost? Uh, I, I'm pretty all over the place with that because I always say genealogy is very different. And everyone who comes to me always wants something very different, usually. Um, so it's, um, I have my website, eastgenealogy.com, Facebook page, East Genealogy. Um, so I always just, you know, say, reach out to me, let me know what your situation is. And I kind of, you know, tailor something to that. Um, just because, and I've said it a billion times, genealogy is so different. Every single person is different. Every single case I deal with is different. Um, so it's never like a one size fits all sort of process. Eric, someone asked, uh, "Is are you a search angel? I don't know what that is, but you must know. Oh, what it is. I do. And no, no, I'm not. What is it? Could you tell us what it is? Uh, I, I, it's a term that's used on, I think, a lot of social media like Facebook um, for finding biological parents. A lot of people do it, you know, as a as a pastime. Uh -huh. um, I often get a lot of people who try to do that and it doesn't work and then they come to me. Um, so but it's a it's a very popular thing. Wow. So, you know, I, I noticed, too, that when I looked at some of your videos and some of your pictures, you're always around some really pretty girls. And I was Everyone wondering, is that, that. is that help being a ge uh, genealogical uh, scientist here? Does that help you meet the opposite sex or what? I'm, I'm still so surprised that you brought that up because it just shows that that's what everyone always goes for is mentioning <laughs> that. Um, everyone says that. But it's I will tell you, genealogy is a very good party trick. <laughs> you ever, you ever, do you ever get scared that you're going to get to a point where you're going to meet somebody and they're like, hey, this is my mom, this is my dad. And you look at them and you're like, nah, that's not your mom or your dad. I can tell by the skull size of your skull. I know where they were born. <laughs> oh, I've born. already I've already dealt with that. Yeah. Really? You you can tell already? It's not your Well, kid? I mean, if they, they're like, I want to, um, I had one where it, it was quite the 360. Um her dad was adopted. And so she's like, you know, my, she was older. She's like, my dad's been long gone, but he was, you know, left on a porch. And I just want to figure out who, you know, his parents were. And long story short, her dad wasn't the one who was adopted. Um, so that was a fun conversation. Oh, so that's, no. that's, yeah, you never know what you're going to deal well, with. That's so interesting, you know, yeah. what happens when you hear that information that you don't really want to hear, you know? I always say I'm a, like part therapist. Um, part genealogist, part private detective. Um, <laughs> I, my, it was actually, I think, I want to say it was my first ever what like adoption. Most for uh, usually adoption DNA stuff. I charge well, you say between the three, the detective, the uh, the therapist. I would imagine the therapist is the one you got to cash in on. Oh, of course. Um, <laughs> it's just, and if I think it was like the first case I ever did adoption wise, it was a murder suicide, and I had to tell someone that. Um, so it, I've, I've kind of gotten, you know, I don't want to say I've gotten very good at it cause obviously it's sensitive, but you know, you, you just have to be sensitive with this stuff. Yeah, definitely. Now, see, Eric, Eric with the, uh, with the police departments that have been reaching yes. out to you, are, are they, they, I would imagine police departments They're Oh, I know we were both cops for a long time and I know they're cheap and they want everything for free. They don't, do they, do they not pay you or what? Uh, some do, some don't. Um, it's, it depends. Um, but you know, sometimes I could be, uh, I had one and obviously I have to sign NDAs for these, so I can never go into too much detail, but you know, without naming any names, I had one case where, um, I was, I was doing it for free because I, I obviously I really want to solve it. Um, I had a very good idea of how to solve it. Um, I told them, how to do it because I said, all right, if we do this one thing, I think that's going to be very good for us. Uh, and they just sort of completely cut me off because they didn't want to, 
I think they were, I don't know if intimidated is a word, but I think they were getting a little upset that the 19 year old was telling them how to solve their case. Uh, but it was free advice. It was very good free advice. So even if it is free, sometimes it's, you know, not wanted. Um, but it's, it really depends. Some do, some don't, but it's, you know, regardless, my end goal is to just, you know, figure out who did the crime or whatever. Have you been off a TV show yet? I've gotten a lot of producer interviews. Yeah. Uh, and ev everyone always says I need a TV show or to write a book. Well, I'm I working on the book. I got to do that. Well, we talked about this before we started about getting the podcast together. Yeah, yeah. With the podcast um, and talking about it, it, it's almost like, you know, everybody, Bill has a real crime podcast and uh, I got my real crime stories now, but mine are, are funny <laughs> comedy wise. Uh, but, you know, the podcast is the, is the way to create your brand. And once you have your brand, that's when you, you know, you're going to ching, 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 ching. That's the police turn. Ching, ching. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I've, I've, uh, I've certainly been giving a lot of uh, nice opportunities, so it's been, it's been very nice. Yeah, definitely see a, a TV show in the future. This young kid who's, uh, you know, you gotta hook me up. <laughs> we will. I mean, I'll do whatever I can for you. You, so know, you know, and Eric, be careful with that too. TV stations are famous for not wanting to pay either. No, no, but if you're gonna do a show, <laughs> if you're gonna do a show based on a kid who's a genealogist, and the police department are coming to him. Because, you know, from all over the country and the FBI and, you know, everybody's pulling at him because he can, you know, sit down there, this computer whiz and pull pull stuff and, and figure stuff out. You know, that, that's. Uh... Yeah, yeah it's, it's funny. I, it's just like um, and it's a common thing, like just getting emails from like casting people like that's that they do that with. You never hear back. They're just like scoping you out. Um but you know, so it's it's just part you part of the job. You have have, cool. You'd have to have. Uh, it's, you're, you're the main character. You're a kid. It's it's like one of these things where um, the kid was the doctor. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, uh, yeah. You know, all the young Sherlock Holmes. You're the young. I genius actually have boy. a big Sherlock Holmes uh, quote hanging in my room. Shocker. What is it? What is it? Um, I forget. Actually, I'll have to look it up. But it's it's something like. Uh, when you remove, there I am. That's in front of the National Archives. I think. That that's a great quote too. The heritage yeah, of the I past is the I, seed that brings forth the harvest of the future. That's fair. I made wow, my dad cool. take that picture under that quote. But I think the Sherlock Holmes one is like, um, you know, when when you remove the unnecessary things or something like that, that the truth prevails or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it was is very pertinent in my line of work, especially. Hey, Bill, bring back that picture again. I think I was like 16 there. Well, I was pretty know, young there. You know what's going to happen in the future? When that picture comes up on somebody's genealogy, you're going to regret that haircut. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Look how short it is. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. I know. told you we were going to bust your chops a little bit. Look That's, at this one. There I love that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was probably like 17 there. Wow, man. In, in, my, in my typical spot where you would find me. 27 hours of the day. That's the one that they can use that picture for uh, when you verse Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there he is with uh, on some TV show, right? Yeah, that was um, when I was filming something in the uh, local news studio. Um, she gave me a tour, which was super nice. You're um, in New Jersey, right? Yeah, I'm in Jersey. Although I think that picture was... Um, the station by my school. I think that was the uh, Harrisburg ABC station, ABC 27. And you were a sophomore in college? Yes, yes. And what, what are you majoring in? Uh, I'm a dual history political science major, so shocker. I'm sure that's not a surprise. <laughs> um, I actually kind of just went down the list of majors and I crossed everything out that I would never do and that those were the only two things left. So I said, all right, guess I'm out of options. Um, but Bill I do a lot of, obviously I do this, um, you know, internships, stuff like that. So I, I keep my um, my resume very multifaceted. Mark, I think it's time for you to do this commercial. Well, let me tell you something, uh, Eric. <laughs> the world. I know you know a lot about genealogy, but do you know a lot about hot sauce? That is. I would <laughs> love to learn. Okay, the best hot sauce in the world is made by Silk City Hot Sauce, and the reason why it's the best hot sauce in the world is because it's made in small batches with pure ingredients and they use locally grown peppers. 
And that's the foundation of every bottle of Silk City hot sauce. Please go on and check it out. Uh, there, there, it's each bottle's like uh, four and a half bucks. You can four, four, four bottles for 20. Uh, and you go to silkcityhotsauce.com. You can test all their flavors. And they have uh, a variety of flavors from mild to hot. Put in the code OTC and you'll get a 15% 15, 15 discount. OTC, silkcityhotsauce.com. Put in OTC and get a 15% uh, uh, discount. And uh, check out the hot sauce. It's great. You like hot sauce? I know my parents do, so I bet my dad will be all over it. <laughs> I'll have to tell him. I'll have to make sure he uses the code. I'm on it. So That's you're great. in school right now, right? And, yes, uh, yes. You know, are you doing mostly virtual stuff uh, while you're in school? Or I, I actually go to a really small school. Um, it's about 1,500 people, so it's like the size of my high school. Um, so luckily, we've been like really good with this sort of thing. So I've, uh, I have in-person classes. I was in person all last semester. I'm here this semester. Um, I think we have, they do like 100 or 200 people like tested per week. Um, in addition to getting tested before we came back, and I think we have zero cases. Um, so thankfully, I've been I've been pretty lucky uh, to well, be I'm on campus. To hear that. I'm happy to. Hear you. So you're in, you're actually having a chance to go into class. Yes. Yeah, 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 which is really yeah. nice. Because no, if it's, it's not good. obvious, yeah, you know, Eric, not you're, obvious, you're not going to get moving. you're not going to get COVID in front of your computer screen, which you probably spend ninety percent of your time in front Very of. Very true. Very true. <laughs> no, it's great though. My. Um, my daughter, she's graduating this year. She's 21. Her name is Sophia. And the reason why I tell you that is because I want you to stay away from her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, Eric. Uh, I'd be uh, listen. If she came home with you, I'd be more than I'd be more than happy. I hope my parents heard that. Uh, you are obviously uh, not only are you a gentleman, but you're very, very intelligent. I can Thanks. tell that. So you started working the, with the police department. What was the first uh, police department that contacted you? How did they do it? And what did they want from you? So it was, I remember it very well because it was actually uh, the week I graduated high school. So it was like 2019. Um, I got this, I was June 2019 when I graduated high school. Uh, I was very popular that month. I had my national news thing. Uh, I was in the Philly Inquirer, which of course is the you know big paper around here in South Jersey. Um, so I just got this email randomly that was a you know police department around here. And he basically said, you know, here's my card. I really want to talk to you. I have this case I want you to do. Um, and for a while, I was, you know, I was barely 18. Um, I was not sure it was, you know, is it something I should be doing? Should I be involved in this? That sort of thing. Was but it I a said, cold case? Yeah. Yeah. So I said, all right, I got to got to go for it. So I uh, met with them and, you know, I got the specifics, that sort of thing. Um, and technically I got the case right before I left for school, my freshman year. Um, but I didn't work on it at all until I came back for winter break. And when I came back on winter break and actually got, you know, did it, I solved it in about two weeks. So technically it was four months, but you, but I, I think it was two weeks. Um, so that was my, my first hurrah. Um, and after that point, I was, you know, kind of like, you know what? Um, I'm bored. You know who's that really was... intelligent, though? The detective that sought you out. Because yeah, he's guy, great. Yeah. I was watching watching TV with a cold case, happened to see you probably on your, uh, you know, your TV debut on that news network. And this, this detective put two and two together in that moment and says, you know what? I'll ask this kid. I bet you he'll do it for free. <laughs> you did. <laughs> yeah, he um cuz I I get a lot of cases where they tried to do it with, you know, they tried to do it or they paid a billion dollars to do it and it doesn't work. I get like very like bottom of the barrel um cold cases that are the toughest of the tough genealogy wise. Those are the ones I get. Um and I, I have a what, what makes him so tough? Because there's a break well, somewhere, nobody there, knows what happened. There, there's a lot of genealogical factors that can play a role. Um, like for example, um, if you're if you're dealing with someone who, let's say he's clearly like you're working on an old case from 1970, and you're he, the guy is clearly 100 percent um Eastern European, the DNA matches you're gonna get probably aren't very good you might not be able to make any conclusions it's really just 
you know, those sort of caveats, like, because you can't really do a lot of, at least in my view, you can't really trace out family trees to 1600s Poland or Italy a lot of the time. So if you're dealing with like an offender who's clearly 100% from Italy, um, and there's basically no good DNA matches, you can't really do much. But if you know you're looking for a, you know, um, a, a white male of English descent whose family's probably been here for 400 years, there's a lot more records, there's probably a lot more DNA matches. Um, so it's kind of a luck thing too. And let me ask you, why do they need you? What, what is your, your purpose there? I well, I, I solved my, my first case, and like I mentioned, and I, was, I really liked it. Obviously, solving a cold case at 18, I was like, wow. Um, I, I always joke, and I, I say I must be the, the youngest person to ever solve a uh, cold case via genetic genealogy. Um, but I solved it, and then I was like, you know what? I really like this. Um, I wonder if there's any police departments with sort of similar situations, like they just have these cases sitting around and they're not going to pay for anyone to look at them. And I know I can probably do it because I had the time and I thought it was interesting. So that's what I did. I just, you know, I didn't want to step on anyone's toes or anything, but I was like, Hey, you know, I don't know if you have any cold cases. If, you know, if you're trying genealogy with them, if they're just sitting around and you're not doing anything with them, I will totally take a look if you want. Um, obviously, uh, so sometimes that doesn't work, but it did work for me. I got about a half dozen cases, um, and that was probably about a year ago. And again, there are you know really sort of just tough cases that I get. Um, so from that point on, uh, that kind of kicked off my journey to this day. Um, and of course, like I mentioned too, I can't talk too many specifics about active stuff, uh, but I, I will say I can I can hope for some announcements on certain things, whatever they may be, hopefully uh, soon. Eric, let me ask you something in regards to the DNA. Yes. When when the DA, DNA is submitted, they submitted it to a company that tests it? How does that work? Well, a lot of times um, for investigative genetic genealogy, you know, they'll have the DNA in, in their state crime lab or whatever. Um, and they'll sometimes they'll upload it like to uh, be sequenced at a, usually it's a private lab. Um, and then sometimes they'll go to someone to do genealogy work. Um, or sometimes they, they will um, get like a DNA list and do it themselves. So usually an outside person is always involved just in terms of sequencing the DNA and uploading it to those sort of public databases. Uh, but what the police do next is kind of up to them. They can um, have someone like me do it. They can get, you know, a super professional to do it. Uh, it really depends. 12-Step Woman and Tim Acosta, thank you so much for the $5 Super Chats. We really appreciate that. Uh, Janine Goodwin, hello. Uh, Sergeant Melinda, how are you? Joan Guerrero, uh, MC's Audio, I'm saying hello to some people already. But Tim Acosta, we really appreciate you, buddy. Thank you. And uh, this is fascinating. Cat in the Hat, hello. Uh, this is really, Eric, it's amazing. But if I could give you any advice if you were my son, I would say make these police departments pay. Because they got plenty of money and they don't want to pay. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, some some do. It's some do. Um, but it's, again, it's just a lot of times it's I uh, have the time and I uh, just say, you know what? Why not? I'll, I'll go Well, the funny it. thing is you're getting better and better at it as you go along just from experience and practice, which is amazing. You know? Thank you. Yeah. And that's that's why it's so great. I'm, you know, I'm helping them out and I'm, I'm uh, keeping my mind sharp. Absolutely. Well, I got a couple of things for you. Uh, first of all, Cat in the Hat. I don't know if you're allowed to use that name anymore since uh, Dr. Seuss has been canceled. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're uh, going to cancel poor Cat in the Hat. We can't have that. <laughs> also, too, um, now I know that you're working with police departments, but I can ima I would imagine if this hasn't happened yet, it's, it's about to happen because you, um, Internet sleuths. You know, they're, they're internet detectives, and I would imagine they'd be reaching out to you and paying out of their own pocket to solve uh, crimes on the internet. Have you been approached by any of those people yet? I actually think I got a few emails like that before um, that were interesting, yeah. And a lot of times, too, with some of the cases I'm working on, I'll find uh, what internet sleuths are saying about the case just because uh -huh. I, you know, I obviously have a good idea of, 
who it is. So that if they're throwing out people's names, I can be like, all right, no, no, no. Let me look at this person. If you know, if I have the time and if I'm at that point. Um, but yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them right now, these internet sleuths, they have, um, they have Patreons and they have, uh, their, you know, their brand and, you know, they have hundreds of thousands of people watching their episodes every week. So they got loot. Why not reach out to somebody and do their own? They're basically doing their own investigations to kind of sort of solve the crime by themselves, you know? So I yeah. imagine it's going to be money like that coming towards your way. I mean, I'm, I'm all, my email is always open. Um, what is your email anyway? I am, and I think Bill, I think. Yeah, I, I put it up on the live chat. I am uh, East Genealogy at Outlook.com. Uh, and East Genealogy is the same for Facebook, Twitter, uh, website, stuff like that. You know, Eric, someone asked if you've ever had to testify in court on any of the work that you've done thus far. Uh, I don't think I can comment on that one. Oh, uh, Okay. I so you're like guy. you're like a super secret agent you know, right that's, now. That's, that's, that's a great answer because you know I was you know I was a cop for 20 years and people always ask me on the side they're like hey man did you ever shoot anybody and I always go I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah, it's because I mean <laughs> I never I, shot I, anybody, but it sounds more interesting if I say I'd rather not talk about it because if I tell them I didn't shoot, I never shot anybody in 20 years on the job, they get mad at me. Like, what do you mean he was a cop for 20 years? You didn't shoot anybody. Like, I'm going to keep that answer up. That's a very good point. Oh, you know, Eric, you know what the favorite police department line was? If I tell you, I'm going to have to kill you because <laughs> it has to die with me, you know. <laughs> or as, a, as Benjamin Franklin said it, what was it? Three can keep a secret if two of them are dead. <laughs> that's yeah, great. That's true. Yeah, that's good. I like I that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> what, what else we got? We got Moonlight View. Eric is amazing. Look at what you're doing over here. Thank you. Thank you. Eric, you may wind up being the Cosmopolitan Bachelor of the Month for the month of March. You never know. They I, could I, I think I probably got to get rid of the glasses first. We'll see. <laughs> they could nominate you based on being on police off the cuff after hours. <laughs> Bobby Murphy says every squad would love a kid like him. Uh, Tim Macosta, has Eric been asked to test? Oh, yeah. You I said asked him that, yeah. Um, 12-step woman retired. Okay, there you go. All right, so – yeah, that's, that's, that's just an interesting thing you got involved in. And, you know, unfortunately, it seems like the, the kids have to uh, figure out what they want to do at such a younger age. Like, nobody asked me what I wanted to do, uh, you know, when I was – well. I, but you figured it out, you know. And a lot of times most people didn't ask me because I was picking my nose and, and looking the window on the bus. But – <laughs> but uh it's good that you you have at least you have the first part of your life figured out you know how to make a couple of dollars doing this duty ron gave us a ten dollar thank you duty ron you're keeping us in business here That's but yeah yeah you definitely have uh at least you got the per first couple of years of your life figured out because you're not tired thank you, thank you. you know yeah, eric the other thing is you could um as an investigator you already have 10 years of investigative experience. Exactly. You really do. Right. Yeah, right. I, I would think you do. And you know something, my son, my, who uh, has a master's degree in international security, he's working for a cybersecurity company right now. I mean, someone like you, they would grab in 10 seconds for a company from like from that. From your lips to God's ears in about no, two I'm, years. I'm, I'm telling you, that's an amazing, amazing experience that you have. Well, the Thank money. You. And the fact that you've been on police off the cuff, you say, look, I, I'm starting at six figures. I exactly. was on police off the cuff. <laughs> 150 a year minimum. Exactly. You know, you know what it is? You set the bar because how many of you are out there? And, you know, you want to be a consultant because you don't want to be, like, trapped in the FBI or this, that, and yeah. the other. You want to be able to bounce around. A lot of times, you know, you get involved with – If you, let's just say you just worked for the FBI. It's going to – you know, it, it kind of sort of, like – Puts a lot of walls around you. Oh my god! You, know, you could work as a consultant for the FBI. Take their money. You take private money. You know, yeah, Sergeant no, Melinda. Like thank you so much for that hundred dollar super chat. We are so touched Maybe by that. Thank you so much. You're the best. <laughs> right now, she's sitting at home and she's like, "I made a mistake. I, I, uh, made I hit the wrong keys. Get I'm, this I'm kid. Gonna, get this kid to help me out." Jensen. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sergeant Melinda. Retired Sergeant Melinda. Thank you Retired. so much. <laughs> so um, 
you're 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 finishing up your second year of college. Yeah, which is it's kind of crazy because I mean, all this pandemic stuff started barely into my first semester or second semester of freshman year, and now I'm going to be a junior in a few months. So it's are you, gonna be, are you in a frat or something? And no, my school doesn't have frats. Um, we're we're too small. Um, but yeah. When you right. walk around on campus, is everyone always coming up to you and saying, "Hey, hey, buddy," uh, hey, and then the, then the favor comes in, right? Then they ask. Them oh, I, favor. I definitely am known as that guy. I'm I'm that guy who does that thing. Um, wow. But yeah, I and like I mentioned earlier too, um, you know, my friends and people come to me and they're like, you know, I I need this person's address or you know, I need this person's number. That's annoying. Um, That's so annoying, you know, because. Um, I'm sure Bill gets this all the time, but the reality is we don't have access to the police computers anymore. Even if we did, I probably wouldn't do this for you right now. And how do you explain it to somebody? Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what? Can you do me a favor? Uh, you know, and I, I don't want to say no, but you, you know, like, what about well, you? You'll, you'll like this, uh, this story. So I don't know if this is a, a Jersey thing or what, but um, I think it has a few different names, but senior year of high school, we played uh, this game called assassin. And basically you have water guns um, and you, you get it. There's rounds and you get a target and you can't, you basically just have to shoot them with the water gun and get them out. Like you have to get your target to advance to the next round. Um, so, you know, I was charging people. Um, I was giving out addresses. I was charging for addresses for my classmates to get their assassin targets. Um, so that's, I just thought it was hilarious. And people would tell me who they have. So <laughs> they would be looking to get their address. So they would be like, you know, I'll give you $5 for so-and-so's address. And then I'll be like, okay, well, if you double that, I'll tell you who has you and who's coming after you. Cause wow. I know. So it was, it's obviously, it's just, it was like a funny, you know. But you know, Eric, there show. could be some nefarious uses of your talent too. You know, yeah, I think people. I think the Gambino crime family, the Columbo, <laughs> they may want they might want to use your services. That's the question. I, I actually you? just started watching The Sopranos like hard the past my week. Son, yeah, my, yeah, my son, he he just finished watching The Sopranos too. But will he go to the dark side? That is the question. <laughs> I don't think I'm cool enough. Uh, yeah, but you know what? I could see you like being the all of a sudden the nerdy guy's in the silk suit and he's got the. <laughs> In the pinky ring, and he's he's feeling his way. Yeah, hey, Eric, do you have any interest in the CIA or the FBI or the military for these uh, this talent you have? Who knows? I mean, I'm uh, I'm all over the place. Uh, I have a I have a lot of friends uh, in the military, though. Um, so they they kind of fill me in on what I can do. My one friend was, is trying to rope me into uh, civilian job opportunities. Um, so I. As I always say, I just sort of uh, keep my options open. It's it's an amazing, amazing talent. And I, I mean, as an investigator, as I said before, you already have 10 years of experience and you're 19 years old. That's right? like, it's yeah. incredible. My you know? friend Frankie that I used to work with, uh, you know, he was so good on the, on the department computers. And, you know, in a room full of people that could work somebody up and figure out exactly where they are, Frankie was the best. And then he went over and he started working for the chief of D's during Comstat. That was our big meeting. And basically what he used to do was he would work the person up knowing what questions the other side is going to ask during this big meeting. He would see the flaws in the case by working it up himself. So he would take a detective's case and then he'd work it up and he'd know where the detective failed. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So he would tell chief of D's and said, listen, they're going to ask about this because this detective didn't do this. They didn't do this check. They didn't go here. They didn't go there. So this way you you, you could prepare an answer when you were in comp staff. Yeah. Huh. And I, uh, I get, I mean, I guess it's kind of related, uh, for some of my cases I deal with, um, although I'm on the genealogy side, of course, they often rely on me for, of course, in terms of, especially if it's an older case, like, what they're going to be doing with the investigation. So I kind of guy, you know, and the guy that's like, all right, well, you didn't do this. So maybe you should look into this person and do that and do that. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of the same way. Like I, I kind of, you know, 
and looking at what they've done and what my evidence is coming up with and being like, all right, maybe we should, you know, do this, this, and this. If you haven't already, check this out. Well, you um, know what I can see you making a lot of money on? I think your biggest money is going to come from people's debts and wills and seeing who's entitled to what. Oh, like, I've done a few inquiries like that from lawyers and stuff. Yeah, it's, I got to learn more, but it's it's an interesting thing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think that's where the money's going to come from because – a lot of these people are, are fighting uh, siblings and heirs to uh, this will, and you know if I can claim, if I can figure out that you you know <laughs> you were adopted or you're not even blood, that would help, definitely help my case, you know, going forward. And who's going to cash in on uh, the money here? Yeah, Eric, you could have helped during nine eleven, but you weren't even born yet because so many people were fraudulently trying to collect benefits. Yeah. Oh, really? Saying they were there, and huh. investigators had to work pretty hard to prove that we were making we were making arrest right there in yeah the they were locking people up people were saying oh so some some guy some homeless guy dove into the pile you know trying to act like he was there you know and they were like yeah. dude are you kidding <laughs> <laughs> you well know? we had people coming in claiming that their family member died and never come home or not that they died they just haven't seen him missing whatever and you know you do a couple of background checks you realize no this person doesn't exist at all they're looking to cash in on money. You know, someone yeah, I, just said, uh, I was in the U United States Marine Corps for almost eight years. You might want to get a degree, then be a military officer. Check out your options. You're obviously a very intelligent young man. Joan you. Guerrero is commenting you on that. And um, Mark, uh, Bill, uh, Duty Ron said, Bill, tell Mark Big Johnny Comer said hello. I saw him yesterday. He worked with Mark in the Queen's Task Force. Yeah, so, yeah he's great. Well, I love this live chat. It's so good to uh, be able to – Princess Mitch, Joan Coffey, Bobby Murphy again. Well, you know what? Since Bobby Geis, how are you? <laughs> since we have you on here, we're giving you advice. Like uh, the person mentioned about the military. See, the thing is to cash in big time afterwards, you need the initial um, – that the, the initial background. Either you are military or you are law enforcement. You do your time with them, you do your service with them, and then you cash in. As far as being a freelancer out there, all that, you're never going to really garner the amount of respect that you need. You know, Mark, he could teach people how to do this too. No, I know, but what I'm saying is that, yeah, he could teach people, but when you get that military, the the base, it's, oh, he, he was a former this, that, and the other, and now he's doing this. Oh, I see, I see. You know what I'm saying? He was a reti he's a retired so and so, and now he's doing this. It doesn't matter how long you do it for. You could do your your six, your eight years in the military, whatever. But then you have that base, and you could that's where you catapult. Yeah, there could be a bidding war between Russia and the United States over your and China. You know, we want him. No, he's he's a United States citizen. He can't go there. And what like about, said, since I've been on the show, I mean, obviously, it's going to be a big bidding war for me. You know, uh, Eric, one of our guests asked me, uh, Bill, how did you come across this young man? And the answer is LinkedIn, where I actually oh, really? find a lot of very good guests for our show on LinkedIn because I can vet them. And if they're bullshit, I don't bring them on the show because you could tell a lot of people troll me, troll me on LinkedIn because they want to come on the show. But I could tell by your credentials that you were the real deal. And Thank that's you. Why well, shows how popular you are. <laughs> that's why you're on this show, you know. Thank you. <laughs> any, yeah. any other questions from the live chat? I mean, to, well, we take the question. I got to say, it's you know, it's so interesting. And I'm one of these people that uh, reluctantly, but now that I, I'm talking to you, I'm like fascinated by it. And I really want to know, you know, what happened to me? Why, why am I such a loser? So, <laughs> I don't know if DNA can help with that one, but I mean, go for it, man. Uh, inspector, <laughs> retired Inspector Joe Reek asked, are there professional certifications for this trade? Uh, there are. Um, there are a lot of, you know, you can become like a certified genealogist. And I think there's a lot out there that like, it's like you just pay to do it. So I don't, you know, I don't really know how legit that is. Uh, but I always, you know, like to think I'm, I'm pretty unique in this field that I, I don't feel like I have to go like get certified as a genealogist because like I, I feel like I already have a good enough track record and I feel like that's kind of what matters. So um, I'm not sure if that's an opinion that other people have. Like to be an accountant, you have to go get an accounting degree. 
Uh, but to ge be a genealogist, um, I always say that I think, you know, having a good track record uh, and, you know, your expertise and your years in doing it uh, sometimes can outweigh, you know, paying for a certification. Um, but I've, I've thought about it for sure. Uh, but yeah, there it's, are. You know, I mean, the certification will just be pacified, like, just so you can um, feel better about yourself. It doesn't sound like you're lacking in confidence. It sounds like, you know, what you're I, talking yeah, about. I, don't, I don't need you, any ego. Boost. You can create your own certification. Screw right? those people. Exactly. And yeah. Well, all it took was somebody who's been doing this uh, about as uh, maybe less than you or about as long as you to create a certification. That's all it was. Yeah. And there's, there's a lot of them that way. You your own Eric Schubert certification. I can I like it. I can there's, there's, how to do this. There you are know, a lot of them. Eric, someone asked if you could talk a little bit more about searching the 1940 census. And this person is a retired NYPD detective. So he's probably an investigator still. So he wants to, you know, talk about that. The 1940 census, um, you can, if you just Google like 1940 census free, um, 1940 census is free. So you can find it. I think Family Search is a good site. Uh, that's free. Basically, it's, you know, it's pretty simple. You just first name, last name, where you think they lived. Um, so you're just kind of putting in the criteria and see what pops up. Not everyone is in it. You know, maybe they were missed by the census taker, like uh, like we were mentioning earlier, because um, back then enumerators, you know, can went around and did it. Um, but definitely just Google like 1940 census free uh, sites have it for free and you can kind of put in the basic info and, you know, hope it comes up. Hey, you know, my uncle, uh, he he's always calling me up, asking me questions about where my mother was from and all this stuff. So I want to ask you a question. What can the amateur genealogists do, for starters, just so they can learn how to start doing this as well? Yeah, for sure. I, and before I forget, too, you got to let me know if you need the help. I'm here to help. Do the DNA test. I got you. Um, I'm all, I will totally help you out. Um, but for, you know, kind of getting started, um, I always say, you know, interviewing, like, family members is always good. You know, get maybe start like a basic tree on paper with you know what what you know and what your family knows, and then you can kind of search around online and Google and that sort of thing, uh, just see what comes up, and you know you can you can kind of see how good you are at it, and you know that sort of thing. All right, Eric, what's your favorite? And this you may not want to give this secret away, but what's your favorite investigative database on the internet that's free? That's a tough one. I mean, honestly, I really don't have one sort of thing that I use constantly. And I think, like I mentioned earlier, I kind of have like a billion uh, tabs open. Usually. Have you ever used Spokio or Anywho? Oh, I've, yeah, I've heard of those, you know, the free people search type databases. Um, normally, I, I don't uh, use them. And, you know, I never pay for that sort of thing. Um, but they're they're definitely decent, especially if you're trying to find like, current people um, well I, I noticed it because when i put like a family phone number and i saw how intrusive it was yes yeah and so it listed every number. single family net member the address yeah. of uh, the father's data but i was like wow that's a lot of information and out it's there. good for me yeah yeah that's why you know i, I threw out that spokio used to be pretty good and then anywho.com you can actually if a phone number is listed you can even google it and yeah it yeah up. yeah for sure yeah, so it's um, there's so many ways you can get started and that sort of thing. How many? Um, um, you know what I'm fascinated by? Like, how many uh, of the cases you go back and, you know, they're taking you to the west, the the wild west, and you know, and stuff like that, where you see somebody's name in like a tombstone or something like that. You ever? Uh, yeah, yeah, all the time, especially going back real far. Yeah, yeah, people from um. The gold yeah, rush, like, so and so, with California, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's a, that's fascinating to me. Yeah, that's yes. really really cool. You, and, you and know, Eric, how about you know. um, how about familial DNA? Uh, there's some legal um, limitations to that because yeah, they think yeah. it's too intrusive. But that that's how that uh, serial killer got caught in California, right? Well, that's that was um, investigative. Uh, genetic genealogy. So like, that's what I do. That's how I find uh, people. But familial DNA, um, that's, I've heard that's, you know, like for, um, 
you know, John and Jane Doe sometimes, like if someone thinks um, that that could be them, they'll do a familial, you know, sort of DNA match sort of thing. Um, but investigative genetic genealogy is like what I do, uh, and ha like how they found the guy in California, Golden State Killer, um, you know, how so many people are finding so many criminals across the country. Um, so it's, it's the same thing that I do on DNA for like finding parents, except I'm finding like a murderer. Right. A uh, 12 step woman has an interesting question. She says, uh, well, thank you also to 12 step woman for the 499 super chat. Thank she you. said, hubby and I had cancer. Can Eric find out via DNA if my two kids might get cancer? Uh, no. <laughs> it was very blunt. I, 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 I can't give a better answer. Uh, no, but I 23 me has a health option. So like, it you it might if your kids do it like it might say um you, you know you are at a higher risk and I'm sure there's just typical metal um not metal medical jargon out there by you know if two of your parents um you know have this you are at this sort of you know X rate well, that mean? sort of gets into the genetic tree you know yeah, yeah. Uh, your predisposition to certain diseases right? exactly what's interesting about those sites is that when you get your feedback. If you choose to pay a couple of extra bucks, you'll get that stuff about your health. Um, you'll get what you get. My girlfriend always makes a joke that she's got um, the athletic gene. <laughs> it was just. <laughs> and it's so funny to see, too. I was actually reading over mine the other day because I forgot it was there. And it was like. There was there is a ninety one percent chance uh, I should have red hair. Uh, but obviously, I don't. But my dad's. Um, but you, whole, you whole whole family you, had red hair. You could be a strawberry blonde. Well, I and my uh, my dad's family. That's like the it's thing. So it's, it's brown. Funny, but it's, did it's you find the mailman that may have been responsible <laughs> for your red hair? I had cases like that. <laughs> that's the thing. It's not a cliche. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, 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 Joan Guerrero says I've discovered lots of interesting information about my family by doing online searches of my family if I had not asked questions of my grandparents when I was a kid and written down the answers I probably would not have been able to find out as much information not all families came to Ellis Island mine came to Canada and Detroit yes perfect that's very true 100% I agree with that and and like I was saying too, um, you know, very true. Not all not all families came through Ellis Island. It's so important to interview your grandparents. Yeah, um, and for before I forget the the mailman joke that that is a thing. <laughs> I've had cases where it's um, it's what the mailman. It's the I had one where it's the milkman. Um, uh -huh. You have no idea how happy I was when I could say that that was true. And it's Listen, not, if you come across a couple and they say it was the comedian. Forget you, ever heard. Forget you ever heard about me, all right? If you slip me a 20, I'll make sure. <laughs> That's it. You got you to gotta be a capitalist with this stuff. You can't be like, I, you know, because we know about, you know, police departments that they want everything for free, you know. They used to be, when we used to do investigations, there were private companies that had video cameras out there. And they would, used to charge everyone. They would try oh, to get, really? they would try to get money from the police department. The police department was like, we don't pay. What are you yeah. kidding? <laughs> Like as if, you know, it was a dirty thing to ask them for money. Yeah. Well, we made it to the hour. So, Eric, do me a favor. Tell us uh, where we can find you. Tell us uh, what you're working on now. Yeah. If you, uh, you want to follow along with my uh, typical daily antics, uh, my Facebook page is East Genealogy. I post a lot on there. Uh, Twitter, East Genealogy. Um, well, my, you're saying East, right? E A S T Genealogy. Yeah, so my initials. It's very, very oh, official. Yes. You know? yes. Um, yes. Very unique. I spent a lot of time coming up with the name. Um, you can find me on there Twitter, uh, website, Facebook, East Genealogy, East Genealogy.com. So you can follow along with my antics there. Uh, and now I'm just, you know, going through my sophomore year. It's my busiest semester yet. But I, uh, one second of free time is a second too much for me. So I'm always on the move. Cases, you know, I'm I'm full speed ahead always. Yeah, yeah. Focus on the studies, man, and uh, you're gonna you're gonna do great. I mean, I, Thank we, you so I'm much. Gonna, the the sky's the limit for you. 
Thank you, yeah, Eric. You know very, something? Very I mean, proud. you're such yeah, you're Thank such you. a uh, breath of fresh air. Thank uh, you for a kid your age doing something so important. And you, you know, you're going to be one of the best in the country at this. You know, Thank you. My, you can my walk into a room really and be that. like, hey, 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 yo, oh, where's my where's my seat? Where's you know? <laughs> Thank Who's buying you, me lunch? <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, it's. And at the end of the day, it's just you know, it's it's something I uh, I was bored. I did it. I liked it, and I just kind of went at it with a typical me fashion, how I normally do things, and it kind of quickly just turned into uh, something I certainly never thought it would. Oh, well, how about even the? Do you ever get calls from people that want, say, a, pr- a pr- prospective uh, date checked out? Um. I'm trying to think because I I feel like that like people do want me to like check people out. Um, I yeah, I want to say that maybe has happened once or twice where they're like, "Can you look into this person?" Uh, and they never tell me why, but I'm sure that could be it. Uh, because although I am a genealogist, I'm sure they kind of well, let me tell you something. If you're going on a date, and you want to ask Eric uh, Schubert to check out your person. Um, maybe don't go on that date. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just don't go. No, if it's not. It's not that. It's the person DNA that's gone on expert. multiple dates. You Red flag go number one. Genealogist to find out if you should go on a date with this person. Don't go on a date with them. I like that. It's yeah. not. It's not one date. It's the multiple dates and people. Whatever you I'm know. Just saying, if if that even crosses your mind, Mark, then yeah. no one would go out with you. Well, there you go. Well, listen, for those folks who don't know, we have a Patreon. And we also, uh, Bill and I want to give a shout out to our new Patreon subscribers. Uh, people are joining up and, you know, it's 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 really, what can I say? Uh, to Justin McCormick, to Bobby Murphy, to Ka- uh, Carol uh, Holderman, thank you so much for, for getting down on the Patreon. If you don't know, we have a Patreon uh, that's how we were managed to put this stuff together, put to get new equipment, um, and it helps. It helps us. It, it it really does help us keep the show moving. So if you're interested, please visit our Patreon page. We have three different tiers. Bill will tell you about them. Yeah, the first tier is uh, and there's humor in our tiers. Believe it. Uh, the first tier is seven dollars. That's the bucket. Uh, tier number two is uh, for nine dollars a month. is called Polish My Rack. And for eleven dollars a month, you get to dip them in butter, and you can dip whatever you want in butter. We're not specifically recommending a body part. <laughs> to those people who have joined up the Patreon recently, we're going to get you coffee mugs. We're going to send them out there to you. The dipped in butter coffee mugs—they're very, very popular. And we're going to come up with some other apparel, uh, t-shirts and hats and stuff like that, are coming to you guys in the future. Also, you're also going to get my. Um, you're going to get my DVD, my hour comedy that I'm taping in April. Uh, if you're in the area of Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and you want to come and see me this Sunday, I'll be performing at the Mohegan Sun Comics Roadhouse, Sunday night, 8 p.m. show, Comics Roadhouse. We'd love to have you there. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube page. Uh, you're on YouTube Live right now anyway watching us. Just uh, click subscribe. We could really use that. That helps us out. Cat in the Hat, thank you so much for that uh, $10 super chat. You guys you guys are the best. Thank you guys so much. The other thing is is we're doing a lot more different things. Mark's doing a show. Uh, he's actually – it's called One-on-One with Mark DeMeo. He's been telling some comedy stories and posting them on our Patreon. And I'm doing a show called Real Crime Stories. And I just had the score of all scores this Tuesday. I have a retired first grade detective by the name of Tommy Dades, who is a organized crime expert. I can't talk about the book that he wrote that's going to be on uh, HBO's already picked it up as a series. I'm not allowed to talk about that. We're going to talk about other wise guy stuff. But he's a real um, organized crime expert. And he's going to be on the real crime episode Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. I got to bone up on my wise guy language, you know, get straightened out, whack that guy. You know, I got to, I got to know all these, all these expressions. You got to get your button. Get your Don't button. Don't watch the Sopranos like I put, have. Put a rocket in his pocket. You know, all of those things. I got, I got to, I got to bone up on that. Is he but, a friend of yours? Is he a friend of ours? And yeah, that's exactly right. And then <laughs> the other thing is, is if there's anyone out there that had, that is a retired member of the service that has a great, crime story 
and they want to come on the show, send me your story or hit me up. Uh, you know how to get a hold of me. You can reach out to me like the wise guys do, right? Hey, and if there's any retired members of the service out there that has a job for me, I can use a job. <laughs> uh, yeah, Eric, also, Eric will teach you how to do genealogy. Yeah, I before got we go, uh, one more shout out to retired uh, Sergeant Melinda. Uh, thank you for that $99 super chat. Like, I mean, that's amazing. You are, a, you are a special person. We really, really thank you from the bottom of our hearts. It means a lot to us. And before we go, I just want to say thank you to Eric Schubert again. Um, you were thank an amazing you. young man. Uh, it was an honor to have you on the show. Big things are going to happen. Thank I just you, thank you. Look, at, look, at your, look at my face. Don't forget this face. <laughs> <laughs> when you get in a position where you can help me, I'm going to need your help. Right? <laughs> That's right. When you see really numbers, like, Eric, when you see numbers across his chest, you can do the checks on the internet, the genealogical checks. 100%. I'm here to help. Your million dollar company uh, opens up, and you need some uh, some uh, flat, what do they call them? The, the detectives, the flat shoes. What do they call them? The Gu the gum shoes. The gum shoes. Yeah, you need <laughs> one of those, man. Hire me. I'll, I'll, I'll help you out. You're going to be the first guy I call. <laughs> I'll do the footwork. I'll do the footwork for you. Thank you, thank you, and yeah, thank you both so much. I really appreciate the opportunity. I wish Eric, you the best of luck. Fun in your... guest, man, right? He was thank a really you. fun guest. Yeah, yeah. I wish you the best of luck in your semester. Thank you, thank you. And I like what you're doing—the way you focus on your semester, and then you get back to the genealogy when you get a break. That's what you do. Thank you. Yeah, and like I said, if you need me, let me know. Oh, hey, so listen, I'm here, I'm here to help you out. Anybody else who tuned in tonight, and we're going to post this, we're, it'll be up on our YouTube page, and the hits will continue to come. So if you're out there and you need uh, Eric's help, uh, it's ES, what is it again? ES Genealogy. Genealogy. ES Genealogy. Thank you, thank you. All right. There and they can also find you on LinkedIn. They, you, yeah. they control yeah. they control LinkedIn like I did for you, right? <laughs> yeah, whatever whatever works. I'm I'm all here somewhere. All right, great. Uh, on behalf of uh, Police Off the Cuff After Hours, we thank Eric Schubert and Mark and I thank all you guys that are supporting this podcast. You're great, and we're hoping for great things in 2021. I got my first shot the other day, and if any of you guys haven't heard. The NYPD has given shots for basically all retired members of the service and their family members if they have comorbidities. Did you see that, Mark? You can bring your son and your daughter to get a shot. My son got it already. My daughter's oh. great, but uh, he, yeah, he's, in a, he's in a nursing program. Oh, cool. So, yeah, but Eric, we're really proud of you, man. Keep up the good Thank work. You so much. I really appreciate it. Your parents are phenomenal people. They raised, raised a wonderful child. Thank you. Uh, I'm and sure they'll love to hear that. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. We really, thanks, really appreciate it. Good night, everyone. Take care, Eric. Thank you.